Hello folks, here we are, I'm the Serpent Statistician. We're going to talk about one of the assumptions in regression. And to do that, that's the assumption of uh, homoscedasticity. And we're just going to look at this in terms of a simple regression model, one predictor. Of course, you have the one outcome variable. And then in terms of the simple regression model, we'll talk about the assumption of homoscedasticity. Okay, so uh, we have one predictor. It's x is the predictor variable, and uh, let's just say, wh whatever this variable may be, that it has a range of uh, 1 to 60 in terms of person's uh, values on this, uh, on this predictor variable. And then we have some outcome variable, and its score range is 1 to 50, let's say. Okay, and so the assumption of uh, homoscedasticity um, is essentially that along this um, regression line, all along the regression line, we have uh, predicted values. And they come out of our model. Now here our model is a very simple one. It consists of the constant and one predictive variable. But <clears throat> in any event, we have predicted values coming out of the model. And uh, the model is then predicting what uh, a person's score is going to be on the outcome variable. So the outcome variable is y. And so all along this regression line, we have the predicted values out of the model regarding each person's score on the outcome variable y. Okay, now uh, those are our predicted values coming out of the model. Um, but what each a uh, person in our sample provides us is an actual observed score on y. And that may very well be different than the predicted um, uh, a value for y that comes out of the model for each person. So, for example, here we have a person and they get a particular score on the x variable, and let's say it's a score of 10, and given whatever the relationship of the x variable is with the y variable, uh, the model predicts that the person's score is going to be right there. But let's say the person's actual observed score, the score they actually got on the outcome variable measure, is right there. Okay, so it's different than the, the, the value predicted by the model. And so that difference we have there is the error in prediction, uh, otherwise known as the residual. Okay, so this is where the assumption of homoscedasticity comes in. Because for each person in our sample, we're going to have a predicted value coming out of the model as to what their value, each person's value, would be on the y variable. We also have their actual observed value from the measure itself that, that they completed and we scored. And so here we get an actual observed value relative to that predicted value from the model. And here we get an actual observed value relative to the predicted value out of the model. And here we get an actual observed value on y relative to the predicted value on y from the model for that particular person. And uh, this just continues like this. Okay, this is for each person. Their actual observed score relative to the predicted score on the y variable, the outcome variable, from the model. Here's the observed score. Here is the predictive score on the regression line. And this continues for each person uh, in the sample. And you'll notice that here, and we can just kind of keep this going. Remember, I haven't put all the predicted values down here yet. And I could keep going here because this whole line consists of predicted values. Depending on how many people are in your sample, like the whole line could be just a bunch of predicted values. But that's where you're always going to find the predicted values is on that regression line. And then corresponding to it is going to be the actual observed score that the person gave you on the outcome variable measure. And so you'll have a lot of predicted values out of the model, and you'll have a lot of actual observed values. And let's say that these are a bunch of observed values. But remember, none of these observed values exist by themselves, because corresponding to each one is a predicted value out of the model. And these differences of the observed value from the regression line, here's a predicted value right there for this person, and here's their actual observed value. These are all the errors in prediction or the residuals, okay, how far the, 
the, the uh, predicted value is from the actual observed value. So anyway, we got even more people here. They got an observed value. But again, you never think of an observed value just being by itself. It always has an accompanying predicted value from the model. And so here we got you know, a good number of observed values. But don't just think of that observed value by itself. Because remember, there's always that corresponding predicted value from the model. And the difference being the error in prediction or the residual. And so here we have more observed values. But of course, you're not going to be thinking of these observed values just by themselves, are you? I know you're not. I can tell right now you're not. Maybe you were going to before you saw this, but now you know better than that. You don't think of any of these observed values by themselves. First of all, it makes them feel lonely. And also, it just is inappropriate to do it. It really isn't even nice of you to do it because each one of these observed values has a friend. And that friend is the predicted value for that person from the model, okay? So every observed value has a friend and a predicted value. Never forget that. There's just no reason to have these observed values feel lonely like that. We just don't want to do that. Okay, now in talking about this then, what, what is amazing, what has occurred here for you is that we can see that the assumption of homoscedasticity has been met. And you say, well, how do we know that? Because look, look here, look, look. Don't be looking away, look at what I'm doing. See, I'm like, a, I'm like an artist. It's like I'm painting a painting. You never knew that this would be like a, a Van Gogh. Hey, it's a Picasso, check this out. Now what this is, this is the variability of these observed values around the regression line, which of course always consists of the predicted value, the corresponding predicted value from the model for any observed value. This is the variability of these observed scores around the regression line. And you'll notice it's about the same over the entire length of the regression line. When you have that, folks, you have homoscedasticity and you have met the homoscedasticity assumption, okay? Now, let me just show you something that can happen, though, is that maybe you don't have this. Maybe this is the variability of the observed values around the regression line, but then as you go further up the regression line, all of these now being predicted values from the model on the, on the y variable for each person in your sample, maybe the errors in prediction start to spread out. Here we have more observed values, but you never think of them by themselves because they always have an accompanying predicted value from the model. But now you notice what's happening. Now that variability is becoming greater around the regression line, okay? And so now if you look at it, it goes like this, whoa, like that, and whoa, like that. Okay, well that means the variability around the regression line of these observed values is not the same across the uh, along the entire regression li regression line. It's less variability here, but then it starts to get greater variability, greater variability, greater variability. Well, now we say we have heteroscedasticity in the data, and we do not meet the homoscedasticity assumption. So what you want to see is you want to see something that looks like this. Okay, before I put those extra observed values in. So the variability around that regression line is about the same along the entire regression line of your observed values relative to the regression line or the predicted values from the model, rather than this. So because we have this, where that, where that variability is about the same along the entire regression line, that's an example of homoscedasticity. That's what you want to see to meet the uh, homo homoscedasticity assumption. You don't want to see something that fans out like this where the variance around the regression line of your observed values is becoming greater and greater, for example, along the regression line. That's an example of heteroscedasticity and where you have not met the homoscedasticity assumption. All right? So now you know about observed values and their friends' predicted values, and you'll never have an observed value be lonely again. At the same time, because it always come in pairs, and at the same time, you uh, have learned about the assumption of homoscedasticity. And what you also have from this is a new word to throw out at parties and scare your friends. All right. Thank you.